Okay, very good morning to you. It is Tuesday, 15th of June, and going to run you through and get you up to speed on the close on Wall Street, what happened overnight in Asia, and then some of the highlights for what's on the calendar for the session ahead. And overall this morning, just looking across the charts here, things are relatively quiet. One thing that you probably can observe, though, is a bit of a late ramp here in Wall Street on the center charts here, which is the NASDAQ 100, the S&P 500, uh, and actually, we've just added to that a little bit and then faded off those highs during the Asia Pack session. But these are all time fresh record highs as far as the NASDAQ and the SP is concerned. On the actual print on the close, continue to see really a digestion of that more rotational play, uh, albeit it's moderate, but definitely evident uh, in post CPI trade which is what had been yields generally depressed, and that's been helping large tech fangs were outperforming again yesterday. And the Nasdaq was up around nine-tenths of 1% compared to the Dow, which actually finished down around a quarter percent. And we've seen that pretty much consistent pattern of tech outperformance since that CPI figure came out on Thursday, so the last couple of sessions. Um, one thing I would say is, though, is that things are relatively flat for the moment. There's not really a great deal of real meaningful information overnight, although I do want to update you on a, on a few things. So uh, maybe just a little bit of a light profit taking from those highs in the Asia Pack session. But if you're looking at the S&P 500 here this morning, it is still sat at around those highs. So you can see here, uh, that was that late ramp going into the final half an hour of trade on Wall Street. One thing to say is that that looks like uh, perhaps a news catalyst has created that move. But um, I wasn't at my desk at half eight last night, but from what I can see on the headline feed, it doesn't look like anything. And very much often the case going into that final half an hour of trade, um, if you ever look at the market on close, the MOC, uh, if you're not familiar with that terminology, if you just check it out on invest Investopedia, for example, but market on close can often see uh, a fairly significant imbalance on, say, buy side or sell side. And you do tend to see quite large uh, fluctuations going into the final half an hour of trade. So perhaps that was a little bit at play. And, and now, technically, we've got that previous high and we've got a bit of a platform from where we hit that initial high um, just after or at the closing bell and then pushed through it and used it as a support area during the Asia Pack session. So kind of confined by there, 42, 48 and a quarter and the R1, uh, which is just above the all-time high in Asia Pack double top uh, that we've traded so far around 42, 54, 55 at the moment. Um, otherwise, elsewhere, one of the other things I guess to have a look at was gold. Um, have seen gold come under some considerable pressure yesterday and it was a bit of a continuation of the move that we're seeing at the end of last week popped higher um, shortly through the uh, comics open and when the US started to really come into market and short term I'm just keeping an eye on uh, probably this kind of range at the moment of what we were trading um, in the Asia Pat session before a, a brief move lower that we saw again pretty light in the way of any real catalyst for that move but obviously uh, liquidity fairly thin in the overnight session and as such then we've been responding to a short-term trend line um, marked from the low from yesterday when we were trading around the 1845 area and it's been uh, used a couple times uh, and responded to uh, on the Asia pack trading hours so around there increasing up towards through the pivot level here going into the European uh, open this morning. So near term, just having a look at that trend line pivot on the downside, 64.5, and, and then the upside, APAC high at 69 for the time being. Any break up above there, um, then you've got 1870 kind of two area, which was that high seen yesterday afternoon, and also the low print that we had uh, towards the back end of last week. And any push on above that, then be looking up to this area here of um, support and consolidation that we saw around 77, 78. Um, gold, though, under a bit of pressure of late overall, and it has come as yields have seen a little bit of movement. So the US 10-year, you'll remember, was just on a pretty one-way train moving higher as yields continued to back off last week. And obviously, yields broke through 1.5%. And we actually saw uh, a move to the lowest level since March. Um, but yesterday, saw a bit of reversal of that, um, perhaps a bit of profit taking on that fairly one-dimensional move that we saw last week. It just faded a little bit. And just having a look at US 10-year yields, 
Um, this is looking, so a bit of perspective here on, on the chart and time frame. Uh, this is going back over the last sort of two years or so. And here you can see this is the move um, that we had during the onset of the pandemic. This is looking at US 10 year yields. And just wanted to really emphasize the importance of the area that we're trading at the moment, which is 1.5%. You can see here that really was the low of that move that we saw um, when yields were declining going back into the summer of 2019, came back to it um, towards the um, autumn and then had another test um, going back in early part of 2020 before then the eventual breakdown um, that ensued when yields collapsed on the onset of the, the, the pandemic and the obviously coordinated response in monetary policy and fiscal policy and so on. Uh, now we've come back through that, you can see again it acted as an area of resistance and now we dropped through it and we're sitting back on there. So this is quite a key area around 1.5 um, in the US 10s uh, and definitely as far as today's session is concerned, I think it could, probably could be quite quiet now. We probably just want to wait for the Fed meeting, although not expecting perhaps quite as much from that Fed meeting as I was a couple of weeks ago. Um, seems like the can's going to be kicked a little bit before the real heated discussions around tapering. But nonetheless, probably the 10-year might trade fairly uh, muted today as we await then more information coming out with the latest projections and a dot plot and so on uh, in tomorrow's session. Otherwise, finally, with the charts, um, FX markets pretty quiet, dollars pretty flat. And if you look at the pound, uh, just having a little break above uh, an area of short-term resistance here um, at 141.21. Uh, as you can see, as far as yesterday evening was concerned, absolutely zero reaction to the extension, of course, of the um, lockdown measures. This was very well telegraphed in the press and comes as absolutely no surprise. So PM Johnson last night confirming the four-week extension to lockdown. Uh, the government's expected to put the delay to debate and vote on Wednesday in Parliament. And it is likely that Johnson's going to face anger from Conservative colleagues for backtracking on what they were dubbing as Freedom Day. Um, a couple of points that I mentioned in my morning notes on this, and if you want to check those out, you can find them on my, my Twitter account or, or in the you know, Amplify Live community. But my, my point really being that irrespective of the political headache that Johnson's government's likely to face from a number of uh, internal Conservative members, I actually think that you know, logically, you would think, well, delaying reopening is going to be a net negative for sterling, for example, because it's going to impede economic activity. I actually think the opposite, because a lot of the mathematical modelling that I was following from various different people who, are, who, who have much more um, uh, intelligence than I were coming out with some pretty interesting and very frightening um, estimates of what this wave could look like if we were to go ahead and reopen on the 21st. Predominantly based on lots of different reasons as well. The ones that we talked about, about still some remaining over 50s to get fully vaccinated, time for that vaccine to kick in in terms of its full level of immunity from it. And then also as well, the fact that we're still in the school year as well with the, the transmission amongst the young. This all coming, of course, because now um, nine out of 10 cases in the UK are the Delta variant. And so that being more transmissible than the Alpha variant and that of then the original COVID. So much more um, ability to transmit. And therefore, for me, I think that this actually, this delay could end up being a net positive overall. I don't, I don't mean just buy the pound this morning, but I definitely don't think it's a negative. And actually, I think it's a positive step economically because although there's some short-term pain, obviously, from not fully reopening, I actually think that you're mitigating the risk that what could have been much more stringent, onerous restrictions that would have had to have come in if, as some of the, the scientific modelling was suggesting, we could have seen a wave to the same proportion of that of what we had in the spring of 2020 on the original onset of COVID-19. So I know this is a very contentious issue, there's also people that would say we should have reopened. But for me, the scientific evidence is pretty compelling. And acting on that, I think, then safeguards us from having a more contained latest wave, 
which will inevitably allow us to open sooner rather than what would have been later if we would have reopened it would have spread and we would have had to have gone into a firm lockdown thereafter so for me this is actually a positive rather than a negative um i, I guess the other thing is look as much as there's tory members that are going to uh, be really annoyed and frustrated by this and that's going to be evident in the commons vote on wednesday i'm sure the latest YouGov poll which came out last night after this was confirmed by johnson's government showed that 71 percent of english adults supported the move to delay the reopening by four weeks so the overwhelming majority so as far as that is concerned i think boris will be able to bat off any of that internal infighting uh, because the public seemingly agree with that move um, the government will review the date again on june 28th with the possibility of easing restrictions on july 5th if it looks better than expected but in honesty this is considered as pretty unlikely at this point so it, it will go ahead as as per the statement last night but as i said pound hasn't reacted at all to this um, in other news <laughs> Biden continues to do the kind of rounds, so to speak. So this time he's been at NATO um, and NATO leaders um, designated China as presenting a systemic challenge in a summit communique on Monday, um, taking a forceful stance towards Beijing. It was Biden's first summit with the alliance. Um, Be uh, Beijing has responded and they've said that NATO needs to stop exaggerating the threat theory. This, of course, comes after pretty similar rhetoric that we have from the G7 in Cornwall at the weekend. So Biden, as we were kind of talking about, doing his best to go to all these kind of unifying um, groups to try and bring together this collective stance against China at, at this point, which is something we knew that was high on the Biden agenda with this latest tour. President Biden also stated that Russia and China are looking to drive a wedge in the transatlantic solidarity and that we will respond if russia continues harmful activities while he added that russian president putin chooses not to cooperate in cybersecurity and other things then the us will respond and of course all of this is very much the optics around the fact that um, biden's going to be meeting putin tomorrow in switzerland and so there's a lot of flexing of muscles you know kind of a posturing and these types of things Again, as far as the Putin meeting is concerned, we're not looking or expecting anything in terms of tangible results. It's more about the atmosphere that surrounds the discussions that they have. Does that then conclude their conversations in a joint statement, which is deemed to be a positive rather than them to just at loggerheads and going their own ways? And do they then commit to having further dialogue in the future? It's probably the best case scenario in that sense. So yeah, again, nothing really actionable um, intraday, but something to be aware of. Um, no let up from the US on China at the moment. There was a few other small things overnight, which probably just warrant a mention. But again, it's more of an update to be aware of than something that meaningful. Uh, the RBA minutes from the June meeting stated the board agreed it would be premature to end uh, or consider ending the bond buying program and policy needs to remain highly accommodative in order to achieve full employment. No real reaction seen in the Aussie overnight. Again, these are the dated minutes. And then from a US stimulus perspective, um, you know, is this thing ever going to get done on the infrastructure side? Well, the latest there is that um, Senator Manchin said further bipartisan infrastructure talks are coming this week. And a group of senators will set a proposal out by the end of the week. And obviously Manchin being quite key because he's that um, particular um, senator who's really on the fence of not is he going to support Biden's agenda on this infrastructure bill and is seen as a real power player in these talks. The other then is US Senate Majority Leader Schumer who has said the Senate will move forward with another infrastructure package via reconciliation even if it doesn't have bipartisan support. So trying to put some pressure on that they'll look to use reconciliation to get around it. Uh, if so, if necessary. So I think that's more targeted at just trying to keep some momentum behind the dialogue at the moment. So nothing really too much to comment on there uh, for the time being. As far as the calendar is concerned for today's session, um, we've just had some UK data come out since I've been talking. So just to get you up to speed, the UK employment change, 113,000 versus expected 150. The unemployment rate, 4.7%. 
in line with expectations. The UK average earnings X bonus 5.6%, touch above the expected 5.3%. So not really too much of any type of immediate reaction here, but Cable has managed technically now to get above this rectangle area. I've got previous support and resistance. And you can see after the breakthrough, it's come back to use that as a bit of a launch pad of support to now just uh, eke out a more progressive move up towards the um, R1 here. So yeah, with that data, nothing really too surprising. Uh, if anything, the average earnings number is a little bit higher than expected with inline unemployment. So perhaps some, um, some moderate wins in the sale to help this move higher. And as I said, I actually think the delay is not a negative, it's, um, even though it does have some short-term repercussion on economic activity, I actually think it's a positive move and that's how I think the market will see it in, in controlling the potential more severe um, case outbreak due to the transmissibility of the Delta variant. Um, otherwise, other than that, um, pretty quiet for the morning. And then you've got a really jam-packed 130 data set um, coming out. And that's because you've got three real figures, New York Fed manufacturing, US PPI, and the latest US retail sales figures. And they're all coming out at 130. So whenever you see a calendar quite packed at one singular moment, it does tend to add to then the kind of uh, mixed signals that you get on the back of data points, because obviously it's gonna be multiple variables. They could be conflicting signals. Probably the ones I think that the market will look at with a bit of clarity will be retail sales. That has seen some flip-flopping as we've seen kind of stimulus check impacts go in and out through the January, March figures. So we'll be interested to see how that is performing. Um, PPIs, of course, um, on the more inflation side and then on the manufacturing side for the New York Fed figure um, as well. But that's expected to remain fairly consistent at 22 from previous 24. So 130 is going to be interesting for sure. I'd say that will likely act as then the, probably the main catalyst for subsequent price movement for the rest of the session ahead of the open then on Wall Street an hour later at 2.30. As far as then later in the session, there are a few more things. Industrial production from the US coming out, cap utilization at 2.15. You've got business inventories in NAHB housing market index at three o'clock. And then you've got the oil infantry data from the API usual much later in the evening at 9.30 if you're looking at it London time. So quite a jam packed day actually after what was quite a quiet calendar obviously last week and, and yesterday to some respect. So um, things should pick up pace on that front certainly um, going forward now. Speaker-wise, the chief economist from the ECB, Philip Lane, speaks at midday. Bank of England Governor Bailey speaks at 1.15 and ECB's Panetta just before 3 p.m. The two ECB speakers will have no text, according to the media office at the ECB. And Bank of England Governor um, Bailey is going to be speaking at a City AM conference on financial services. So I'm not expecting or anticipating any meaningful comments on either the current economic conditions or future monetary policy but nonetheless to be aware of he is speaking uk supply uk german and then 24 billion dollars coming in a 20-year bond uh, auction later on this evening at 6 p.m but that is it so i'm going to leave you with that um, again if you're watching this on youtube really appreciate it if you could like the video help it boost it so it goes out share it as many people as possible subscribe to the channel and uh, any questions at all feel free to leave a comment absolutely happy to help have a great day ahead, guys. Take care and see you tomorrow.